using a 19 millimeter socket, we're going to go ahead and remove our lug nuts. Go ahead and set those aside. Remove the wheel, set that aside. Now right up here on our lower control arm and our ball joint going into our knuckle, we wanna go ahead and remove this cotter pin. Use our pliers here to get in there. Use an 18 millimeter wrench, we're gonna go ahead and loosen our lower ball joint nut here. We're gonna try and loosen that as far as we can. Right up to the axle. Use a 13 millimeter wrench on the top here. I'm gonna use a 13 millimeter socket on the bottom. I'm gonna remove this bolt. Remove the nut and the washer from the top. And remove our upper bushing here. Gonna go ahead and tap our bolt down from the top through. And go ahead and pull out our bushings and our sleeve right here. lower control arm we have a bolt here that is holding the tail end here this is a horizontal bolt it's a 21 millimeter socket for the nut and an 18 millimeter on the bolt head let's go ahead and remove this nut go ahead and pull that bolt out now on the on the inside of the wheel wheel area, we have a splash yield right here. There are two plastic retainers. They have a Phillips head screw in the center. You wanna unscrew that and then you can use your trim tool and get in behind. You wanna go ahead and pop that one out. Do the same for the one behind it over here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull down our splash shield. What we wanna get access to is this nut right here. This, is, this nut here goes to the bolt, our vertical bolt holding the front portion of our lower control arm. Let's go ahead, loosen and remove those. Using a 21 millimeter wrench on the nut on the top side, we're gonna use our T55 Torx bit on the bolt side here. that nut and the bolt. Now along our lower control arm, we have the wiring harness here for your ABS. We're just gonna use our trim tool. I'm gonna pop these little buttons off like so. Once that's free, we can go ahead and work our control arm. 
try and work this out. I'm gonna go ahead and get our pry bar up on the front portion of the control arm. And we're just gonna get it in there between the subframe and the mount for the control arm and just kind of work it out. Once we have that out, let me go ahead and give the back side of the control arm a few bonks. Now on the front side of our control arm, we want to go ahead and get this bushing inside the chassis here. We have it lined up. We're going to get, go ahead and use our dead blow hammer and we want to try and tap this in. What we want to do is line up at least our hole in the bottom. And you can see that this is still a little bit crooked. that bolt comes through, go ahead and get that nut started. So we're gonna go ahead and use a ratchet strap. We're gonna hook it in the control arm here. And then we're gonna hook it onto our subframe on the other side. And we're gonna use our ratchet strap to go ahead and pull our suspension inward, pull our control arm into the chassis here or into the subframe so we can go ahead and get our bolt in. Really get that to pop into place. Let's go ahead and get our bolt installed. And it might take a little bit of wiggling to get that to line up in there, but pop that through. Go ahead and get that nut on there. Then you can go ahead and release your strap. I'm going to go ahead and take your ball joint. going to line this up. Once we get that lined up inside, go ahead and get that nut started on the top here. I'm going to go ahead and snug down our bolt here. I'm going to go ahead and torque this down to 92 foot pounds. Go ahead and snug down our nut and bolt here. Now we don't want to make this too tight. We just want to make sure that it's snug and in place. Let's go ahead and torque this down to 92 foot pounds. So let's go ahead and tighten down our lower ball joint not here. You want to go ahead and torque this to 15 foot pounds plus 120 degrees if you have the ability to do so. In our case here we're simply going to tighten this down pretty snug. Now once we get this tight what you want to do is make sure that you line up the notch in your castle nut with the hole in your ball joint stud. That way there you can put your cotter pin in. Now once you have your nut torqued, you want to make sure that you can get your cotter pin through the castle nut, through the ball joint stud, and out the other side. If it doesn't go through, you want to go ahead and tighten up that nut a little bit more. You never want to loosen that nut. So tighten up a little bit more until that lines up. Once it does, go ahead and feed your cotter pin in. Push it through. I'm going to go ahead and bend over our tab on the top using your pliers.
pinch it over pretty good. You can go ahead and snip off the excess pigtail. Take your bolt. You want to take your washer, concave side facing up. Take your rubber bushing with the raised portion facing up. Feed it into the control arm. Next bushing, raised port down. Washer, concave, facing down. Sleeve. Push it up a little bit. Washer, concave, facing up. Bushing, raised portion, facing up. Squeeze it in there, push it up into the sway bar. Bushing, raised portion, facing down. Washer, concave, facing down. And topped off with the knot. Go ahead and get that nut started a few threads. Using a 14 millimeter wrench on the top and our socket on the bottom, let's go ahead and tighten this down. Now, a good rule of thumb is when you tighten these down, you want this bushing to swell out just to the diameter of the washer itself. This looks good. Let's go ahead and install our wheel. I'm going to start all of our lug nuts and get those threaded on by hand first. Once all these are on, I'm going to go ahead and get those snugged down. torque down our wheels to 100 foot-pounds. Now that we have your wheels torqued, you want to go ahead and bring your vehicle down to your local alignment shop and get that taken care of so you don't have premature tire wear. 